Hey guys, what's going on? It's Blade again from Coralie Security and today we are doing something a little bit different. We are looking into comments and questions you've asked in later videos. I'm going to go through them, a couple that we've picked out and answer them uh, in a short format for you. So going on to the first question, I've got how to diagnose noise problems. Um, it's a bit of a vague question. I mean, it, noise problems could be obviously electrical noise or it could be actual noise like rattling, for instance. If it is, if it is rattling, you need to obviously look into going around the vehicle, trying to diagnose where that rattle is coming from and address it there. Get some sound editing in there, some foam, um, some actual dynamat sheets or something like that. That's gonna reduce the rattling. Now, if you're looking at electrical noise, this could be down to many, many things. So. If you're using poor quality RCAs and they're say overlapping of power cables, that can be causing an issue there that basically be picking up interference through there. Uh, also, if you have a bad earth, so if you're earthing to a point which is not a strong earth, it could be picking up interference through there. Um, so there's, there's a few things that you need to look at. Mostly it's gonna be earth related, usually. So look at your earth point, uh, make sure that it's strong try moving it to a different point. Obviously your whole vehicle chassis is in earth, so you can always change it. Um, if you're still getting the whining, so alternator whine, uh, then you might want to look into either upgrading the alternator cable or other things such as better quality RCAs or uh, even sometimes could be amps coordination. Okay, so next question I've got here is, can you do a video on how to wire up a pair of four ohm speakers to two ohm? So I'll cover this quickly now, but we'll do this a bit more in depth in a later video. So essentially how you do this is if you had two six and a half inch speakers in one door and then two six and a half inch speakers in the other, and then you've just had a two channel app. So to drop that to two ohm, if you've got two four ohm speakers, you'd run the positive terminal from one speaker to the positive terminal of the other, and then negative to the negative, and then those two are both wired together. So that's parallel wiring. And then you'd run from one speaker or the other, your positive and negative speaker cables into your amp and because you run them parallel the amp will read it as 2 ohm rather than 4 ohm. So obviously you do the same on the other side then you have a pair of 2 ohm speakers or two pairs. Okay so next question is going to be about the DMX7722 DABs which we've just recently reviewed. It's actually this unit here. Uh, this person has asked what is the pre-out voltage? So pre-out voltage on this head unit is 2.5 volts. Uh, if you don't know what pre-out is or pre-out voltage. Essentially it's the uh, amplifier outputs on the back of the head unit where you would plug in your RCAs. Um, voltage does make a difference in terms of sound quality and the actual output. Uh, this is 2.5 volts. If you wanted something better than that, you could go up to the DMX8021, which has five volt pre-out. Now, if there is any other information you're not quite sure on in regards to the specs on head units, on our website, we should have every spec available written down in the description. If not, you can always head on over to the manufacturer's website, so Kenwood Electronics, for instance, for a Kenwood. Um, search the part number of the stereo, and they've got all of the available specs that you would ever need to know. Okay, so next question is, could you possibly do a review on a single DIN? So I have done a few reviews on single DIN stereos, but I can quickly go through one now. We've got here a JVC KDX560BT. Um, now this is quite a unique unit being singled in because this has a little screen on it. So rather than a normal like a two or three line display LCD, this has an actual screen. Uh, the benefit of that is you can actually add a reversing camera to this. Uh, so if you have a vehicle that only takes a singled in stereo and you don't want a big floating screen but you need a reverse camera, this is a very very good option. You've also got Bluetooth, there is a DAB model of this as well. Um, so, fantastic unit. If you want me to go more in depth with this, we can do a, an actual reveal video, an unboxing, we we'll go through the whole thing later on. But yeah, if you want that, just drop that in the comments. Okay, and the last question for today's video is, how would you fit a stereo to a vehicle that has a molded doubled in location? So essentially, if your vehicle doesn't have like a direct doubled in hole, and it's like a molded plastic, uh, you would need a fitting kit or a fascia. Uh, so something like this for instance, so this is for a Mark 6, Mark 5 Golf, Caddy, Transporter, uh, very very common fascia this. Um, we keep stock of multiple different fascias for vehicles from Connects 2. Um, 
So if you basically, if your vehicle doesn't take a direct double dim, we're almost certain to have a fascia available for it if you can change the stereo. Uh, but yeah, what you would do is you take the original stereo out, which would come obviously with that plastic trim on it. You pop this in and then this will allow your doubled in stereo to fit in place. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. It's a bit of a quick one today, uh, just a quick Q&A, but I think going forward, we'd like to do this on a monthly basis. So if you guys do have any questions for me uh, or any questions for the company in general, please drop them in the comments for any of our videos and we'll kind of tally them up at the end of the month and do a, a Q&A like this. Uh, hopefully we'll have a few more questions. It'll be a bit of a longer video then. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed this, Make sure you like it, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.